Thank you. Chester High Youth Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Alton Briscoe now presiding. Case number 10-004, the case of Tevin Moulton. May the whole entire courtroom please stand. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I swear or affirm. I swear or affirm. That everything I see or hear, everything I see or hear in youth court today, in youth court today shall, be kept confidential. shall be kept confidential. Everybody may sit with the exception of the jury. Jury, do you solemnly swear that you will objectively weigh the issues in this case and render a disposition according to the evidence and guidelines of youth court? I do. All right, let me sit. Respond it. Do you solemnly swear? that the testimony that you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. In your court, to require the same level of decorum be maintained as in any other judicial forum in Delaware County. There will be no gum chewing, smoking, tobacco chewing, eating, or drinking. No cameras, recording devices, audible beepers, or cell phones are allowed. No laughing, talking, or other inappropriate behavior is permitted while court is in session. If there is any improper behavior, either the bailiff or I will stop the proceedings and ask that the behavior be ceased. If verbal warnings are not successful, bad behavior on the part of a spectator or juror will result in a removal of that person and your hearing will continue without them. If a respondent's behavior disrupts this courtroom, the respondent will be expelled from the courtroom and a mistrial will be declared with the case being sent back to the referring official. Does everyone understand? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Bailiff, please read the facts of the case. Yes, sir. The offense in this case is disruption. This is the student referral by uh, Mr. Thompson. Uh, reason of referral, verbal assault, and foul language. Reported by Mr. Thompson. Um, frequent, frequency of referrals. Um, this is first offense. Um, location was in the classroom. Um, second floor, seaside. This is the description of problem by referring person. Tevin Moulton threw a juice at a student. The student confronted Tevin, and Tevin verbally assaulted the student. Then I asked Tevin to leave. He then verbally assaulted me, and he walked out of the class. All right, uh, this is the respondent statement of fact. Um, it says, I walked into Mr. Thompson's room on time. This happened after lunch. I was very angry in Mr. Thompson's class with what happened at lunch. At lunch, another student verbally assaulted me to the point where I became very angry, enraged, sorry. I told him to leave me alone. Instead, he threatened to throw juice at me. He punched me and I ran out and ran out of the lunchroom. I took my juice in the classroom and waited for him to show up. He showed up and I threw the juice at him. Mr. Thompson became infuriated and told me to leave the classroom. I tried to explain myself, but I was so angry, I was yelling, and then I stopped out. This time, will the youth advocate please come with the opening statement? Yes, Your Honor. I'm Jamar Saunders, Mr. Moulton's youth advocate. Mr. Moulton was verbally assaulted and threatened by one of his peers, then was assaulted again physically. His peer ran out the cafeteria, but Tevin did not follow him. He made the right choice there, but when he made he made his mistake was in Mr. Thompson's class when he threw a juice at his peer. Mr. Moulton did not know how to control his emotion, and off of anger and impulse, the juice was thrown. When confronted by his teacher, Mr. Thompson, he reacted wrong. Then he stormed out the classroom. Mr. Moulton was in a tough situation. He did not know the, kind of, the right thing to do. To remind you, this was his first offense. Please ask effective questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Saunders. Uh, Mr. Moten, is there anything you would like to say before the jury begins questioning? Yes, Your Honor. I would have to say what happened that day. It was more like a, a buildup of aggression over the past weeks and months. Uh, other students, and even this student, constantly verbally assaulting me, like abusing me, like punching on me. And that's why that would drove me to commit this act. Uh, at this time, the jury may begin questioning. In your statement, you had uh, 
made reference to uh, abuse going on in past months, weeks. Can you tell the jury what, if you don't mind telling the jury what that was all about? It was mostly because it'd be like a group of kids, like, you know, verbal assault, burning on people. They would burn on me. And most of the time, they would try to hit me in the hallways, knock my books over in that kind of way. And I would be angry every single day because I had friends trying to help me with this, but it got to a boiling point. If I was, if I didn't know what burning meant, would that kind of fall under the category of bullying, in a sense, yes, with sir. the past stuff that's been going on? Yes, it would. Don't you believe it'd be wiser to tell one of the guards or a teacher or administrator? Well, at that point in time, I kind of wasn't thinking that way. I kind of thought I was my own justice. Do you think that was the right thing to do? It most definitely was not. Do you think it's a better way you could have handled the situation? I actually do. I actually think I could have told Mr. Thompson, told him about the problems I've been having, but instead I took the alternate route. Have you ever been written up for this type of incident before? No, I have not. Do you feel anyone was harmed or by your actions? I have to say the teacher was harmed because I verbally assaulted him, which I shouldn't have been in the first place. The student was harmed. And as you say, the class was harmed by the destruction. So can you, uh, do you mind telling the court where you were wrong as far as your outburst on Mr. Thompson? It really didn't have to happen. I actually was trying, I tried to talk with sense and manner, like tell me what actually happened through the events of the lunchroom to the classroom. But I have to say, I use an aggressive tone that I should never use with an adult. So what have you done to repair the harm done? So what's you done? I actually haven't. I didn't really have the guts to say sorry to Mr. Thompson or even enter his classroom because I dis disrespected him in such a uh, manner. Is there any more questions from the jury? No. There are no further questions from the jury, Your Honor. Thank you. At this time, will the youth advocate please come with a closing statement? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Moulton has informed us that he has been harassed by his peers for several weeks. Tevin thought he could take care of this situation alone. Tevin thought he could get away with it. Tevin has an idea of who he has harmed. Tevin knows his strengths and weaknesses. Tevin knows he did something wrong. Tevin wanted to come to youth court. He cares about his education and he cares about other people's education when he helps them. So make the disposition restorative and help Tevin develop as a person. You may begin deliberation. We're going to start off with uh, jury duty. I want to hear one uh, number and see if everybody comes to consensus. Uh, Kareem had the same up first. Eight hours of jury duty. All right, we have eight. My face. I was thinking something like 12. McKinn, he, he chose youth court rather than being suspended. He admitted to everything that he did wrong. Um, when it came to what he did wrong, he admitted that he should apologize, but he never really knew how to do it. I mean, I think eight hours would teach him how to apologize. And Mr. Thompson, he already has a good stand, uh, standing relationship with Mr. Thompson. I agree with eight, too. So we all reached consensus to eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. I apologies to Mr. Thompson for the verbal assault. I agree with... Uh, Kareem, anybody else? Is it written or verbal? It should be written because he doesn't know exactly how to say it to Mr. Thompson. So rather than coming up front and actually having to talk to him, writing it down on a piece of paper, you know, rather than word face to face, I think would be a better way to um, express itself to Mr. Thompson. Okay. Uh, any people have any other opinions? Reach consensus to. Your apology to Mr. Thompson. Is there any essays? What do you want him to write? I think he should write an essay on bullying and how to try to put a cope, I guess. I'm not, I wasn't leaning towards an essay, I was leaning more towards uh, complete like research on bullying. 
I I completely agree, but the only question and I, I I keep running through my head when the essay and all that is thrown into is is it is it is it being restorative? Well the whole aspect of him writing this is like for him to think more more so. Because apparently when we questioned him, he didn't know how to handle it. And he lets it escalate it's like and to the point where he explodes. So if he thinks more and you know he does you know research on it, maybe he'll know how to cope with it better than anything. Do we agree? We yes. just yes. everybody yes. agrees. Yes, sir. Okay. Baylor, please escort the responding youth advocate back back in. Yes, sir. Please remain standing at your seat. Thank you. Okay, has, has the jury uh, come to a disposition? Yes, sir. Please stand and read it. <clears throat> In the case of Tevin Moten, the Chesapeake View Court has reached a disposition. Uh, we have assigned you eight hours of jury duty. The justification is to help you understand that all actions have consequences. And to also help you understand that effects that you have on people. Apologies. Um, written apology to Mr. Thompson uh, justification is for your out-of-character actions towards Mr. Thompson. Uh, we would like you to complete some research on bullying and how to cope with it. Um, justification just for self-evaluation of yourself, just to help you out with, you know, how to cope with bullying. Um, personal development assignment, uh, we recommend anger management. Also, another assistance on self-evaluation. I like that ad, that this disposition is not to punish you. It's here to restore you. Youth Court is based on restorative justice, so that's what we're all about. So this is not to punish you in any way. Uh, Mr. Moten, do you understand your disposition? I do, Your Honor. Do you plan to complete your disposition? I do, Your Honor. Okay. Court is adjourned. Bailey, please escort the respondent out for exit interview. Allow me, please. Okay.